Okay, field charging is not gonna be for everybody because for the cost of the charger, you could buy the charger and the cable and the adapter. You could probably buy three or four other batteries. So field charging is not gonna be for everybody, but if you're on the go and you're a dad like I am, and you tend to cancel plans and make plans at the last minute, then you may wanna field charge so that you can charge in the car on the way to wherever you're going or charge in a hotel room on vacation, whatever it might be. So if you wanna do that, we're gonna talk about that now. The reason I'm so excited to share this with you is because as of right now, this is the only charger on the market with such versatility in a small package at a good price that has a low charging amperage to fit the needs that we have for field charging. Okay, so field charging is not gonna be that hard. Some of you are just gonna bring your own home charger and power it with an XT60 on a source battery and charge in field. But for me, I was looking for something very specific and that is to be as compact as possible and to be able to charge using a battery bank because I did not wanna be having to plan a field charge because that would mean that I would need to pre-plan and charge the source battery and bring a bulky home charger. So before we get into that, let's go over why the current stock charger for the Axial SCX24 is faulty and the reason why I'm looking for an alternative. So this is our stock battery that charges at 800 milliamps, which is equivalent to 0 0.80 amps. And our battery here is 350 milliamp hours. So technically we should be charging at 1C, which would be 0.3 amps or 0.4 amps. I did notice on the battery here it says charge rate of 3C. So technically we should be able to charge at 0.35 times 3, but we have noticed in recent times in the Facebook groups there's a few incidents where people have shared of these batteries exploding. And ironically I showed a couple of the pictures to a friend of mine and at that moment he actually shared with me a picture of his battery that actually just exploded as I was talking to him. <laughs> so there's obviously an issue going on here. I don't necessarily think it's an issue with the battery itself nor the charger itself. However, I think them being paired together isn't quite working for us. So we do need to find an alternative to this. I do have a couple ideas. We do need to meet two criteria. The first is it needs to be compact. And the second is that we're gonna look for something that has a low amperage rating, something that we can charge at a very low amperage. Because currently the, the ratings for the chargers that are out there, the smart chargers are gonna be charging at one amp at the least, and they do allow us to charge higher, but the minimum is one amp, which is already too high for our needs here. I'll be sharing a couple of ideas on how to field charge. The first one I don't recommend as much, but it is a lot more simple. The second method is better value, but it allows you to have some flexibility in other batteries that you may be charging in the future. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that and we'll show you right now. For some of you, simple is gonna be better and this is gonna be a ridiculously easy way to charge battery in the field. <laughs> so battery bank, and we're gonna use this guy. This is not a parallel board, although it looks like one. This is a charge board from a company called Emacs. And I had, I had this from an Emacs Tiny Whoop or small drone that they included in it. But if you were to buy this now, this is about $13 plus tax plus shipping. So you're looking about 16, maybe even $18 for this tiny little thing. So relatively speaking, the value of this is not nearly as good as the next alternative I'm going to show you later, which has more versatility and flexibility in how you charge batteries. I emailed Emacs and they confirmed that this charger will charge at 0.5 amps. Okay, so that's about one and a half C for this 350 milliamp hour battery. So this is fairly safe, fairly decent, but it's literally as simple as plugging that into the charge, into the power brick. And then we're going to use only the, the balance lead similar to the stock charger, and that is literally it. So when it's empty, it's gonna be blinking. When it's solid, then it is charging. So it'll be charging to 4.2 volts at 0 0.5 amps. And this is literally it. So if you have no other need to charge any other batteries apart from your 2S batteries, or even 1S batteries here, then you can use this charge board. And again, this is made by a company called Emacs they design tiny loops or FPV quads. So if you're looking to go out and buy a field charging setup, 
then I would not advise buying this simply because the value isn't there. I mean, this thing is 15, nearing $20 by the time you pay tax and ship it to your house. And the features of this is basically nothing, while the ISDT H605 Air has is pretty much full featured and charges anywhere from two to six S batteries at various milliamp hour levels. Whereas this is limited to 0.5 amps and you're pretty much gonna charge a very limited uh, size battery. And yeah, so as far as value is concerned, I can't recommend this, but if you know for a fact that you're only gonna be charging these batteries and you're not gonna be into RC cars or drones or any other sort of battery setup, then perhaps this may be worth it because you're spending 20 bucks on this and you don't have to buy the SC100 cable and you don't have to buy the ch fancy charger and then you don't have to buy an, adap an adapter of any sort. You literally buy this, plug it in and you're done. So if you're gonna go simple and driving the SCX24 or other kind of 2S driven micro crawler is pretty much as far as you're gonna go, then this may be it. But I have a feeling that some of you guys are gonna wanna evolve into different hobbies and things like that, that would require a little bit heavier duty and full featured charger. Another thing that's interesting about the setup is that if you look at the spacing of this USB port versus the US this USB port on this particular charging brick, you'll notice that you can actually fit two of these guys on here. So one in this port, and if you had an identical charge board, you could put it on this side, and you could essentially charge four 2S batteries at one time with one brick in a pretty compact space. <laughs> That's pretty easy to set up together. But again, you'd be spending quite a bit on two of these guys, and still, I, I wouldn't recommend buying that unless you really, really know that this is the setup you want because it limits you and there's no flexibility. But just wanted to throw that out there that that is possible and that's something you can decide to do if that is something that fits your need. Let's get an idea though of how compact my setup is for the SCX24. So the advantage of having a micro crawler, for me anyway, is to be stealthy. So that I can carry this on my back and I can go to grocery market, I can go to store, and I'm not lugging around an RC car that people can see that I need two hands to occupy. So it's literally in this small bag. This used to be my diaper bag for my kids, and I've reused it as a SCX24 bag. So this is made by Chrome and it's a sling bag. So in here I have everything I need. So in this top compartment, oh this is from Daiso by the way, you can buy this container for 150 or 175 I think uh, from Daiso. And this top part has this tool for your wheels. It has an, a lipo alarm or a tester, some extra clips, and then I have my tool. I wish I could tell you where I found this but I actually don't remember. <laughs> it is uh, the perfect size Allen wrench for our SX24s. And it just happens to be able to screw on here and go onto a keychain if you wanted to. But that's what I have in here and that just stays in that compartment. On this side, we're gonna ha we have batteries and voila. I was actually surprised this is this small. This is the new charger I've been talking about. And this is the ISDT H. 605 air and to give you an idea even though you know how big these these batteries are this is a quarter a u.s quarter and we're talking tiny this charger is very very small on youtube and on websites and stuff you see people holding it but you don't really understand how small this is until you have it in your hand or next to a u.s quarter this thing is very very small so this thing actually fits in here and that i just discovered today so that's very compact and that works out. And this big compartment is where we have our SCX24. So it's hidden here. A Wrangler will fit in this bag as will a deadbolt. And of course the transmitter fits in there as well. So super stealthy. You have two hands available as you're going about your day holding your kids water bottles or groceries or whatever you got to do. So all the stuff fits in, here, fits in here. So this gives you an idea of how small I was targeting for a charger that literally fits in a sling bag on my back, hands-free. Now we're gonna go into the operation of 
this ISDT H605 charger. So you'll notice that it has only one battery and there is no screen whatsoever. So how this works is it hooks up to your cell phone, the cell phone that I'm filming this video on. And the cell phone will have the screen that tells you the voltage and the amps and every, all the critical information that you would normally have on a much larger charger. So what this button does is you're gonna preset your specs. So for this battery, I'm gonna be presetting the specs to charge at 0.4 or 0.3 amps, and it's gonna be a 2S battery. And once I do that, uh, I just press that button and it's actually gonna charge immediately. And I don't need to keep my cell phone on. It's uh, connected to this through Bluetooth and it's just to read it and to um, set, set it up. So once you set it up, then that, batter, that button operates to start the charge. I was curious what would happen if the Bluetooth connection got lost or the cell phone turned off completely. And I'm happy to report that the charging did continue. The connectivity to the phone just shows you the status and does not interrupt the charging at all. And when you're done, you can pull up, you can pull up your cell phone and take a look at the specs, or you can just unplug. What's critical about the specs of this charger is that it meets the requirements, meaning the, this charges can charge at very low amperage. This can charge at 0.1 amps. So remember, we're looking at 0.3 to 0.4. This can charge at 0.1 amps, all the way up to, I believe, 6 amps. So I can use this charger um, to charge larger batteries for, say, an Arma BLX 3S car, which the battery itself would be about yay big and yay thick. So much, much larger than this. So this has some flexibility. Then the advantage is that I can do multiple things with this, but again, the full purpose or initial purpose, other than me buying new fun toys to play with, is to be able to charge batteries for this car safely in the field in a compact way that is not too expensive. Speaking of which, let's go over the pricing of everything. So this retail is gonna be $30, so about 33 bucks once you add tax, and then you're gonna, going to need a charging cable of some sort. And I happen to have this one. I don't necessarily uh, recommend this. This I just happen to have this for my tiny whoops. But basically, we'll plug straight into here, and we'll do that setup later. And then we're gonna plug the battery bank into you, here using an adapter. So it's gonna be a lot of wires, and it looks kind of cumbersome. Uh, but I'll show that to you. But in the end, it's all gonna fit in this bag very comfortably. Um, again, pricing. 33 bucks with tax-ish, if you if it's free shipping from wherever you get it from. And this I got from AliExpress for probably, I wanna say like five or seven bucks. And then we have our, let's see, this guy. This is the cable, this is made by Toolkit RC. So not the same company as this guy. But Toolkit RC makes this thing, it's called the SC100. And it's an adapter. Basically it has the USB-C on one end that will plug into my battery bank and then this will plug into the input, which is on this side. So instead of having a XT60 battery, like a LiPo battery, to charge smaller batteries, it's basically going to use my battery bank that I, already, that I already carry around with me day to day. So on my chest on the strap is this cell phone holder, and in here is going to be my battery bank. So this one happens to be a 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank. And so you can do the math to figure out how many times you can charge a 350 milliamp hour battery without uh, degrading or uh, dropping the voltage on this uh, too much. And so we're going to go ahead and set that up. Uh, you probably don't want to watch me do that, so I will speed this up. Once you connect the power, it'll ask you to connect to the device. Go ahead and click yes, and then it will start to connect. Once connected, you'll see the icon, and then the screen will pop up. And it will ask you to update the firmware, go ahead and say yes, and let it wait to 100%. We're going to go ahead and adjust the battery current to 0.4 amps. Then change the cell count to 2S. I did get this error, but after a couple times, it resolved itself. This is the setup, and it actually works. So here we have the battery bank with the SC100 by Toolkit cable, which is USB-C to XT60 input into the ISCT H605 Air. And from there, you can hook this up any way you want, but I, this is not being used as a parallel board. It just happens to be the only adapter I have 
for XT60 to this PH2 connector for this stock battery. And the balance board goes there. And there you have it. So that's the setup and it works, which is great. Um, the single button thing does work. You press the button and it literally just keeps the specs that you input into the phone. That's right here. And it charges the battery. This is a screenshot of what I see on my phone. You can see that it took about 30 minutes to fully charge and the screen will turn blue. At first glance, some of you may be thinking that it's a big disadvantage to not have a screen visible on the charger itself, but there's actually some big advantages. And one of those is that you can play with your car at a distance for, within Bluetooth distance, probably about 30 feet or so, and still be able to check the voltage and the basically the status of your battery charge on the go. Normally you'd have to be physically at the charger. You'd have it in your pocket or within visible distance. But in this case, you could have it set up in a fairly further distance and still be able to see the status of the battery charge. Another advantage of having the screen on your cell phone to see the battery status rather than on the charger itself is that and I tried this when I got here, is I had the cell phone on my charging mount in the car where I normally would have it for GPS. So I could see the charging status without looking down at the seat or in my bag or wherever I'm storing the charger and battery. So that's a little thing, but it's something that's kind of a cool convenience that you can only get with a charger that's designed like this, where the screen is visible on your phone. I think it's safe to say that this is going to be the best portable way to field charge your Axial SEX24 and it works. <laughs> so there's a lot of research going into this to find the various chargers that would work, um, be safe and be small and compatible and everything. So if you are looking for field charging, I really think this is the way to go and I'll continue to use this in the field and I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, there won't be links to this. I don't have any affiliate links. This isn't a sponsored channel, but I happen to get this ISDT uh, H605 from Newbie Drone, which is a online retailer for drones and um, tiny whoops. And I just happen to like Newbie Drone a lot, but you can buy this on Amazon, um, AliExpress, and a variety of other places.